Hi guys, Samantha from Juicy Wedge Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create my frosted leaf pendants. So we're going to need to make the stamp for this pendant, for these pendants first. And now you can buy the stamp off of my Etsy shop if you don't want to make your own stamp. But I thought that it would be nice to show you how to create your own stamp. So first you'll need a piece of leftover clay like this one on your thickest setting. You want it as thick as you possibly can. And then you'll also need some leaves. Now I've picked out a few different pieces. And the important thing with these leaves is you want the back where the veins are um, to have quite prominent veins. You don't want something that's very smooth on the back. You need something that has very obvious veins. So here are a few of the ones that I have. Now I'm thinking that I'm going to use these ones. I like them a lot and I'm just gonna take off a few pieces sure I think I'm gonna just take that there and this one's a little bit too crowded so I'm gonna pick off a few of these leaves because this is what our stamp is going to look like. So we need to make sure that it looks how we want it before we uh, start working with it. So I don't want any of these leaves overlapping. I want them all separate from each other. Just taking off little bits and pieces. There. Okay. And I'm probably going to set that down over there. And I'm going to press that into the clay. And now I've dusted my clay with cornstarch already. Both on the front and the back. And this will help this release easily. Just want to stick this into the clay first. Okay, then we want to tend to this one. Don't want any overlaps. Okay, and that needs to go. This one down here can go. There we go. And then press that into your clay. And then you can add a few more if you want to. Like I've got this little bit that's left over. I think I'm going to add that up here. And then that should be enough. Okay. Then you want to bring over just a piece of paper. And I'm going to be using this grease proof paper. And a roller. And you just want to roll. You don't want to be rolling like that. You want to be burnishing. And this will be really sticking those leaves down into that clay. So it's nice and flat. Okay. And now this can be used to crew to um this can also be used with twigs and branches and things like that if you wanted to. There we are. Okay. Then I'm just going to bring over my blade. And I'm going to trim up these edges. This is what we're going to use to create our stamp blank. So that's the one type, and I'll pop that to the side. 
and now I want to make another one using this one. And I'm just going to get this to stick down onto the clay. Again, I'll bring over my paper and burnish. Okay, now the other one I might be able to sell in my shop, I'm not sure. There'll be links in the description below to stamps that you can use, but um, a lot of them aren't going to be deep enough for me to resell. So we'll see which ones I can sell. There we go. Now this one we're going to have to carve. So you'll need a piercing pin. I'm just going to be using this one. And what you're going to do is you're going to trace out these lines with your piercing pin. So take the most prominent ones first. There's one there and there's one there. And you'll just carve them out. Like so. Do that all around the leaf, just take these really prominent ones. And you want to be going quite deep with your piercing pin. And just do all the leaves like this, and then we'll come back and do the outside of the leaves as well. Okay, and there I've carved it out. Now you want to gently go around the outside and carve that out as well. And this takes patience. It looks really nice in the end. And don't worry about any edges that are closing up. Um, we can take care of that in just a moment. So just continue doing this all the way around all of your other leaves. And then when we're done, I'll show you how to get the really fine veins as well. Okay, so that's all done. Now what you want to do is you want to gently start pulling so that you're stretching out your clay. And try and do it equally so that your leaves don't distort or anything like that. And this will give us more space to work. So things like that. I can now go back and open up and I'm just going to make sure that these um, holes that I have here are nice and deep because I want a nice deep texture. So just go back around now and just reopen these veins. And then we can cut them out and bake our textures and then we'll be able to start making our actual project. You're not going to be able to get these really, really fine veins here. That's basically impossible because I can't get a needle that's thin enough for that and it will just be really, really hard. You'll have to find a much larger leaf to be able to do that. And I want to be able to fit most of my leaf onto, um, onto my pendants. Okay, and I'm going to come back to the other one. I've decided that I want to make it deeper. And we don't actually need that scaly texture that we got with it because we're going to be working with liquid clay so we're not actually going to see that we just need these nice 
wide holes that I'm showing you now. Okay, just make sure that that's open. That one's open. Okay. And then I'm just going to bring over a larger one so that I can hollow out this area over here a little bit. Okay. And that's basically it for that one. So I'll set that one aside so that we can bake it. I'm just going to bring over this one. Now the option is if you have fresh leaves like this, you can actually take the piece of clay that will be work that will actually be pressing a texture into later on and you can create this texture on that piece of clay and not have a texture stamp at all. That would be the ideal thing, but for some of you you might not have leaves all year round and so you might want a texture stamp. So we're going to lose the grainy texture that we have over here, which is a little bit of a pity, but we don't actually need it. So I'm going to bring over a ball tool and we'll hollow this out a bit more. Okay. We'll just take that and we want to run that through the indents that we've already made and really try and hollow it out. And just continue doing this until you're happy with how deep your texture is. And then when you're done, cut away any excess clay that you have and then you will bake that at a for full hour at your brand's recommended temperature. I'm going to be baking it at Primo's recommended temperature because this is leftover Primo clay. Okay, and then once you've hollowed it out, like we have around here, insert your leaves back in and gently press them down. And this will restore your texture. And you'll have to press it down with a ball tool because they're too deep now that they're too deep that you'll be able to burnish them. So you'll have to do this with a ball tool. But this will give you back your texture because I was thinking it would be a real pity to lose the texture. So just take your leaf, gently insert it back into place and it should quite happily fit back in. And then grab your ball tool and gently press along its length and this will be squishing that texture back in and at the same time you'll have made your texture deeper which is excellent so there we are I'm quite happy with how this is going to look like now and you can use almost any leaf to do this you just need something that's going to um, reveal a texture. So a leaf that doesn't have much veining in it is going to be, isn't going to be as good. But you still could get a texture out of it. You just would have to insert veins. And this is quite different. This is kind of more twiggy than a leaf. So you could do all sorts of things. Okay, now we'll lift. You can see we have that texture back. And it's a light texture, it's not going to be as strong as it was before. But it will still have given you a fairly decent texture to work with. And then just use a pin to work out any stray bits of leaf that might be left. There we are. Now I'm just going to trim up the edges a little bit and then I'll pop that in the oven for a full hour and then we can continue and create our project. Ok, 
Okay, so they're out of the oven and here is how they look. So now what you want to do is you want to make reverses. So all you would do is you would dust these with cornstarch, grab another piece of leftover clay, press that into here like you would any normal stamp, take it out, trim away the edges and then bake that as a normal stamp. And then you would end up with something that looks like this. As you can see, it is the reverse. And so now you can have a texture that will, this texture will yield that texture, this texture will yield that texture. So now you have your reverse. And now we want this texture in our beads, so that's why we needed the reverse. So here they are. Okay, then you're going to need some pearl white clay, which I have over here. And this was run out on my thickest setting, which is about 3 millimeters thick. And then you want to select a selection of alcohol inks. You don't need to use all of these, but these are the ones that I wanted to use. I have denim, cloudy blue, stone washed, sailboat blue, and aquamarine. Okay, and so. I might not use the last one that I showed you there because it's a little bit on the green side but I'm going for like a really wintry blue sort of colour. You're also going to need one of these. All you need is a wooden block, double sided tape and felt and this is how we're going to apply our alcohol ink. And then we're also going to be using Kato Clear Liquid Clay. Okay, so let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to dust off your clay with a bit of cornstarch just to prevent it from sticking while you're, while you're sticking your stamp in. So I'll dust one end and that will help our fingers not stick. Then I'm going to bring over one of our stamps and I'm going to dust it off and then I'm going to wipe the excess cornstarch onto my clay and then just brush it off. There we are. Nice and easy. Okay. And then you're going to want to press your clay into your texture stamp, which is pretty easy. Nothing much to that. And then I'm just going to burnish to smooth out this back. And then we'll lift and we'll have that beautiful leaf pattern. Okay, then you're going to need your cutters that you have chosen. And I'm going to be using my rounded daggers. So let me just get those out of the packet. And I'll start with the largest. And let's see, where do I want to cut this? I want it to see, I want to be able to see the leaf. And it also might help to just gently smooth off these sides over here so you don't have a rim over there. So I think I want to cut it out about there. Okay, there you go. You can see how nicely that cuts. Okay, and that's one. And because it hasn't, it's got cornstarch on the back, it's not going to stick to the tile. So that's our one pendant, and that was the middle one. And now I'm going to see if I can get any more out of this. Actually, I don't want to use the smallest one, I just want to use this. <clears throat> debating, debating. And just continue 
um, you'll need to roll this through your pasta machine again, dust with cornstarch again, and then cut out two more of these to go along the side here, and then one more of these so that you're going to have five pendants. Okay, so I've cut them out, and you can see that I've already done one over here, and this is what we are aiming for with all of them. So they're going to look really nice. So, I'm going to put this one to the side, because that one's already done. And we will do this one in the meantime. Keep these out of the way, because you can burn them in this process. And I think I might have accidentally distorted that a little bit. No, it's just my eyes thinking that. Okay, now you want to take your felt pad and you want to have each of your colours and have a bit of sailboat blue here, some denim, some cloudy blue, and finally some stone washed. I decided not to use the aquamarine. Then you're going to gently start inking. Just a little bit at first. Okay. And that will get a base on. Then you will take your heat gun, set it to your medium setting and cure the top. Then you will use your ink pad again. And just make sure that you get all those little areas. I'm just going to try and get in over here. Because I want to outline that bit too. You want to get all the raised areas. Okay, and I'm quite happy with that. You want quite a mottled pattern. Just gonna see if I can get down there just a tad more. Alright. Okay, enough now. <laughs> I tend to do that. Then you need to set those alcohol inks with your heat gun. Okay, then you'll need your translucent Kato liquid clay. And I've chosen this liquid clay because it is the uh, clearest and it's quite shiny. Now before you put your liquid clay on, just make sure that your bead isn't too hot, that it's going to cure your liquid clay instantly um, because you want it to be able to run through. So this is a little hot, you can feel by your hand, if it hurts your hand then it's too hot. So allow this to cool first before you put your liquid clay on. Okay, so it's cooled down enough. I'm going to do a line of liquid clay down the middle. And then gently, don't rub too hard because you can um, move the, the alcohol inks while you're doing this. You don't want that to happen. Just be a little, just gently dab it. Don't be going and rubbing it because then you'll dislodge your alcohol inks. And the purpose is to get the liquid clap over everything and fill up those grooves. Just like that. Now I want to put resin on this later to give it a dome, but this liquid clay will give it a pretty good varnish as well. Then turn your heat gun onto your hottest setting and cure your liquid clay. Oh, hold on. There, just missed an area.
There we go. Now you want to cure the liquid cloud to the extent that this alcohol ink pot completely clear to you, but the veins remain this milky. You don't want to be able to see the uh, pearl white in the veins. You want it to look like it's been filled in, kind of like a dichroic bead. And you'll see that even though we're using kind of the same alcohol inks, they will vary in um, colour. So that's quite interesting. And so I'm going to go and continue to do this with all of my other pendants. And I'm also going to go and use this stamp and I'm going to make some pendants with that as well. Okay, and here they are. Now that I have finished doing all of them, and you can see that they do range in colour, but they all match each other because, of course, um, depending on how the liquid clays react to the polymer clay, you're going to get a slightly different uh, colour variation in each of them, but they will all match, which adds to the uniqueness of them as well. So, those ones are finished. I just need to pop them in the oven now for about half an hour at Primo's recommended temperature, and they will then be able to will be able to put backings on them because, you know, the back doesn't look very good at the moment. But I can't put backings on them at the moment because they're too brittle. So don't go and put backings on them just yet. Now also, I think to remember is I'm going for frosted leaves here. So it's kind of the last of the leaves before winter and you're getting that little frost bits, a little bit of frost on them in the early morning. That's what I'm going for, but you can use this technique to create any season you want. You could make it green and it will be summer. You could maybe do some light greens and pinks for some for spring. You can do deep reds and oranges for autumn. It would look very nice whatever time of the year you're trying to do. So it's a really versatile project because you can do lots of different colours and you can... Um, you can tweak it a bit to uh, match any costume you want to wear it with. So I'll pop these in the oven. I'll go and do the other ones as well. And I'm probably going to do them in a different colour. I might make them a little bit more, um, maybe a bit more spring. Because I know that some of you are in spring right now. I'm in spring at the moment, but I know a lot of you are also in winter. So I'm going to go for a spring and winter project today. So I'll go pop these in the oven and I'll show you when they're out. Okay, so I finished baking those pieces. So here they are. Now the oven was a little too hot. It glitched a little bit. So these have a slight yellow tint to them. So I went and baked another set because I still like these ones. They've still got a nice look to them. But I went and baked another set and this time the oven was correct. So you can see those two look quite different. And then I also did the green ones. And I'm not sure about them. I think um, that stamp's too bulky for this technique because this one's got a lot of detail in it, whereas this one, it kind of just looks like sticks and things. So if you like it, let me know. But I'm not going to continue finishing these ones because I think don't really like the look of them. So I just wanted to show you those. So I think this one's definitely, these two with the stamp definitely are the best. So now what we need to do is we need to take care of the backs. So I'll pop that back there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to bring over some pearl white clay. And I'll have rolled that through my thickest setting. Here we go. And I'll just place this onto the clay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly trim it out. I'm not going to use my cutter for this. Because I want these two pieces of the clay to bond together. And you can use liquid clay if you want to. Um, I don't really need liquid clay for this, it will bond just fine. What you do is you squish it down nicely onto the back and then you smear off the excess. And this is going to be first off bevelling the back, which I quite like. 
and it's also going to be smearing that clay onto your baked pot and just go around with your finger and smooth and now I do want to texture this so I'm just getting it basically finished and then we'll put the texture on and then smooth it some more There we are. Then just get rid of those because you don't need them. And you can either smooth this and leave it the way it is, or you can put the texture onto the back. And I thought a nice thing to do would be to use this texture that we already used. Position it and gently press. Don't press too hard, it needs to be a somewhat shallow texture. There we go. And it will just give you a light texture on the back. And I might add a little bit more. up here because that area looked a little bit empty okay then just gently smooth away any fingerprints that might be left and continue doing that with all of your other um, pendants so that their backs look all nice and then we will put them in the oven for another half an hour at pretty much recommended temperature and then we can finish it off with a resin and things like that okay so they are out of the oven and now we want to drill holes in them. So I've drilled all the holes already apart from this one. It's just got a little something there. There we are. So I want to drill a hole in it like I have for these ones. So let me just move those aside. And you'll just need a pin drill. You can use a motorized drill as well if you want to. I find it's quite hard to drill a straight line because I'm always afraid my fingers are going to get hurt by it. So I prefer to use a manual drill. And I'll just drill halfway through one side and drill through the other side, and then the hole will meet up in the middle. And then I like to drill through a few times just to clear out that hole. And then I'll blow through, remove any bits, and there's your hole. Easy peasy. And you can make it a little bit wider if you want to. I'd start with a small, um, small size drill and then work your way up to the larger sizes. But I'm happy with that size drill. So now what we're going to do is we are going to coat it in resin and then after we've done that we will sand the backs. So I was thinking instead of using ice resin this time around because I usually do use ice resin I was thinking I'd show you guys how to use Lisa Pavelka's Magic Gloss and a lot of you have had trouble with it drawing away from the edges of your pendants and I did experience that problem but I find that it's because this really 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 likes to dump so you have to put quite a bit more resin on each of your pieces compared to a lot of other resins because it it can hold a really high dough so I'll just bring over a resin mat and I'm using this one because it will fit into my little UV light my other ones won't and then you're going to take your UV resin and you also will want a little pin on the side as well because that's going to help you draw it across the edges and now this is really easy to use in and of the fact because it really holds its surface tension quite easily and so 
having resin spills generally is not a problem with this. And don't worry about those bubbles, we'll get rid of those in a minute. So I'm just busy pouring what I think should be enough. And then I'll just use the pen to drag it to the edges. And the nice thing about the magic gloss is instead of it taking 24 hours to cure, which is fine, but for impatient people like me, it can be a really long wait. Um, you can cure it within minutes. I like to leave it in the UV lamp for at least 10 minutes to 15, because I like to make extra sure that it's completely cured. But it's really quick to cure. And now another thing, as it cures, it's not curing evenly. The top of the resin will cure first, and then as time goes, the lower part of the resin will cure. So if you take it out of the, um, out of the, um, oh, the light, and the surface looks like it's cured, but you haven't left it in for long enough, and you press on it, it will actually be squishy. But the top will have cured. So you just need to be careful of that, because I've had that happen once or twice, and then I realised what was happening. And so you do need to be careful of that. Now you can see that I had to add a bit more resin there because, of course, this dome's really, really high, which is nice. I want a nice big dome. But you just need to work with it a little while to make sure that you get the resin everywhere. And just let it sit for a few... You don't. You need to leave it for maybe a minute, and you'll see where the resin's pulling away. And then if it's pulling away, just add a bit more resin, spread it out again, see if it pulls away. If it doesn't, then you can pop it in the UV lamp. So, let's see, I'm looking around here, and it looks like it's not um, pulling away anymore. I want to get rid of these bubbles now. So I'll just use a long straw to blow. And that will get rid of some of them. And if you're having a little bit of trouble with it um, blowing off, you can use a heat gun. So I'll just use my heat gun. I've got on my hottest setting and on its lowest wind speed. And I'm just going to hold it from quite a distance. There we go. It's like a good... Um, probably about half a meter away from the resin because I don't want it blowing but yeah it got rid of all the bubbles now I can see that it's pulled away again and that can be a little irritating but if you're finding that that's happening a lot you can always switch to a different resin like the two pot ice resin that I like to use okay and so I'll continue doing this with all of my other pendants and I'll pop them into the UV lamp for about 10 minutes and then I'll show you what it looks like when it is done. Okay, so here they are now that I have finished curing them and I'll just bring them over so you can see each of them. They look really nice and the ice resins, oh excuse me, the magic gloss has cured quite hard just as hard as the ice resin, except that it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to get that way, rather than the ice resin which takes about 24 hours. But there we are, they're looking really nice. So now what we need to do is we want to just give the backs a little sand. So I'm going to be using my polishing papers, and this is entirely optional, you don't have to sand the backs, I just think that it gives it a nice polished look, but again, you don't have to do this, I'd recommend it. But if you don't mind the matte look that you get on the back, then it's just fine. Oh, and also, if you wanted to highlight this texture, you could put some paint in here and then just wipe it with the wear to wipe so that you highlight the texture. I'm okay with the way it is now, but that is another option for you if you wanted to do that and maybe highlight the texture there. That would be an interesting way to highlight it. Okay. 
and you can use as I said before you can use any alcohol ink colors you want um, you can use the pinata inks as well I like the um, Adirondack ones because of the fact that they have a little their colors they're not muddy they're more they're earthy they look a lot more natural than the pinata ones which are really bright and vibrant so you can use either of those alcohol inks and that will work just fine and you can do this technique without the liquid clay if you're a little bit intimidated by the liquid clay um, you will just end up with a slightly less milky look which is fine but it will come across looking just fine so you can see I'm going through whoops, each of these grits really nice and quick very quick to do this, this is polishing paper so I'm going up from my 400 to my 8000 and there we are, we've got a nice satin sheen to it. I'm not going to worry about the edges, they're just fine. Um, but here you can see that it's got a nice little shine to it and it will clean up any little fingerprints and things like that. So again, completely optional, but you don't have to do it. Now, next we'll move on to sanding. Oh, excuse me, next we'll move on to stringing. Okay, now stringing is really easy. I'm just going to be using this Accuflex that I bought from Fire Mounts and Gems, and it is the black version. I've already attached the clasp on one end, but you basically do the exact same on both ends. So I've done this end, and I'll show you how to do that when we reach the other end. And I'm going to be using some clear crystal beads, because we're going with the winter effect still, so I want to carry on with that and so use something that kind of reminds me of winter and you'll just string a crystal then a polymer clay piece crystal then a polymer clay piece and so on until you've used up all of your pendants it's really quick really easy and a very effective way of stringing these pieces and also if you wanted to make earrings you wouldn't drill them to the sides you would put the resin on, sand them, and then you would drill them through the top on whichever side you want. Put a jump ring through the top and um, you would attach an ear wire to that. And that would make a really beautiful earring. So you can try that out as well. So almost done. I might as well just finish up here. Now I'm going to do the exact same for the others that I have. So we're going to have two beautiful necklaces after this. There we are. Nice and easy. Nice and simple. You can see how beautiful and shiny they are. Okay, now what you're going to need is a charlotte crimp. And that's what they are called on for months and gems. But if you look on eBay, they can be called bulldog crimps or clamshell crimps as well. So if you're looking for them on eBay, um, try out all three of those search terms and you should be able to find them. Then you'll just need a normal crimp, and that's what it's called everywhere. Some type of plier to squish it. And just squish it right up close to the end of your cord. Bring up your clasp. Squish that flat so it's nice and around the crimp. Then let me just bring out the jump ring quickly. Here we go. Here the jump ring, open that up, grab half clasp, which is the other half of our clasp, attach that through the loop in the Charlotte crimp, and string it on. And then you can attach the toggle clasp. And there is your necklace. Really simple. This took me, oh, with all the recording time and baking and sanding and things like that, it took me maybe around four hours, probably less if I did um, only one set. If I had only done this set, it would have probably taken me around two and a half hours. If I'd done the ice resin, it would have taken me longer because of the curing time. But Total work time without the baking and things, it will take you about an hour to finish it off. So it's a really nice quick project, you can use it for gifts and all sorts of things. So let me go and do these ones quickly, this necklace quickly, and then I'll show you what the finished necklace looks like. 
and there we go they're both finished and so you can see with this one even if you accidentally scorch your clay just a touch um, it will turn out just fine it just has a more moody darker sort of an appearance to it well this one has a more light appearance as you can see so don't worry about um, maybe scorching your clay a little bit try to avoid it because it's um, better to do that um, by baking it on a ceramic tile uh, with a piece of paper under and over it plain pieces of paper and that should help prevent it from scorching but if it does again a lot of the time it can be salvaged there are very few of my projects where I burn it beyond rescue and sometimes it even turns out better because these are basically the exact same colours but they look really different from each other which is really nice to see and so that's basically it for this project and so I do hope that it was helpful to you if it was please do let me know and all of the links to the um, supplies that I supply on my Etsy shop will be in the links below so there'll be a link to my cutters that I used and there'll be also links to the textures that I recommend for this project so there'll be leafy textures and all sorts of things down there so you can go and have that have a look but again this technique can be used with any texture stamp you want I think it's most effective with an image based texture like these leaves because it kind of gives more of a story to the necklace but again you can use any texture and it will just get this really cool highlighted faux dichroic sort of a look so again don't stress about getting the correct texture stamp use whatever you have if that is what you want and so I do hope this was helpful to you please do let me know if it was and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.